Yay! We are on episode <laughs> five, and I am so excited to be joined by my good friend Amanda. And uh, if you are enjoying this series of chatting with, which uh, I'm so excited that I've gotten to five episodes, uh, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe below. Any information we talk about on this episode, I'll be sure to link in the description. And thank you so much to everybody who's been supportive of this channel, especially my wonderful guests that have like taken time to talk and to allow their um, candid moments with me be uh, shown to the world. So uh, welcome, Amanda. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited about this. And like I was saying, I, it's just the energy I need right now um, in my life. So this, I'm really excited. Yeah, you've been through, a, I mean, a lot, like a lot of us just kind of stuck indoors, but you had a, a bit of a, a health scare yourself. How was that experience? Like you did teledoc services? Yeah, so actually I, I, I feel very lucky to have had a mild case. I didn't get any tests or anything, so I've been always like saying it's a presumptive yeah. COVID case because I try, and I think you probably noticed on my stories and stuff, I tried to be really gentle and sensitive about how I was approaching the topic. I didn't want to not tell people, but I also took yeah. my time and after I talked to the doctors and like, how do I phrase this to people? So it's a presumptive case I had. Um, and it was a mild case. So I, they just asked that I do not leave my apartment, obviously for, it was two weeks then plus three days after symptoms. So I was here for a, a bit, my one bedroom apartment. <laughs> um, poor Frank was doing like all of the dog walking, all of the grocery shopping, Rite Aid runs, getting my prescription, like all that crazy stuff. But um, it was not, enjoyable it was a very bizarre illness it had certain symptoms from like other things i've had kind of collectively dumped in um but i reached out to mount sinai i've always gone there for other things uh and they were really quite on the ball like once i reported it to us my uh that's word i'm looking prim primary care doctor it got kicked over to like a special task force. And then I got put into a, an actual research study they're doing on it. But I said yes, because I, they track my symptoms every single day in an app. And then I talked to a doctor once a week via Teladoc. So that's been really interesting, really nice, like calming to know someone's watching my symptoms and they track you for a full 28 days. So I'm almost done oh, wow. with my tracking phase to make sure there's no relapse or anything. But totally crazy just like I felt like I was being really safe really careful but I think what we're especially in New York what we're finding is we just all live too close to each other I mean I was going to the trash room I was taking the dog out and every time you do something like that it's exposure so I was like I was being so careful and so like mindful but it just you know found its way so but I'm, I'm on the mend I'm all well I'm allowed out so <laughs> Yeah. I mean, what, what's really amazing about you is that, especially you, she has a blog called Cheap Courage, um, and you use your Instagram, and you use your just, the fact that we can share our experiences as humans on the internet is such a fascinating practice, but I think part of what's drawn our friendship closer is this idea that you are so candid. You are so, <laughs> like, comfortable with being vulnerable and sharing of yourself. And in that, I feel like, depending on the subject matter you discuss on your uh, different modes of sharing, you find ways to destigmatize de things, ways to bring comfort to others, because people, some people aren't able to share as eloquently as you. So, Thank you so much. Wow. I'm coming <laughs> on this show every week. Thank you so yeah. much. <laughs> but um, yeah, do you want to talk about how you started uh, Cheap Courage and like, yeah, um, it's so funny you should say all of those things about me because I um, grew up as a very shy child, um, very meek, um, didn't really have much of a voice outside of my writing, so that's sort of where I first was able to just share pieces of me. I never let anyone read anything, but it's where I started to sort of dump out what was in here. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I started Cheap Courage, honestly, I should know this, but I think maybe four or five years ago. It'll pop up in my time hop and I'll be like, oh, it's my anniversary. Um, and it's actually a quote, I should have pulled it out for this, but it's a quote from a F. Scott Fitzgerald short story. And he's just talking about one of his flapper girls in the story and that she has a cheap courage of just 
um, not being, it's almost like a dig in the book, but I liked it. <laughs> Just not being mindful of, you know, risk or anything in that it was uh, a, a cheap courage. Like she was um, putting on a, putting on a face to go brave the, like brave the world. And um, so I really took to that. I was like, oh, Oh, yeah, yeah, that's how I feel a lot of the time because I was a shy child. So uh, most of my life it was like, okay, I'm going to go out there and be, you know, exuberant. I'm going to share myself, but it was inside, you know, I'm reeling. I'm always very nervous what people think of me. So um, it kind of was born out of that comment in the short story. And I thought I really wanted to just start sharing um, little, for lack of a better term, little ditties about life and not have to be formal about it. I think I've spent years like, I want to do a blog. I want to do a blog, but I don't cook and I don't know anything about fashion and I don't know anything about beauty. And like, what do I have to share? And all I had to share was just experiences and little musings. And so I just leaned into that and that's how it yeah. sort of started to morph into what it is now, which I wouldn't even, I don't even know what it is now, but <laughs> it is it's what it is. It's there. I mean, I, I have <laughs> that I've started on and off, like in my life. Um, only a couple have I like just fully like burned from the internet and I'm sure like somebody <laughs> could find it, but like, You're like scrub, scrub it out. <laughs> but, it, but it is, it is just like a nice little Thing to look back on or people to read because you're ca you're capturing a moment and a feeling and you know you're talking about how you may not have been an expert at, at this or that but I think that part of the charm of like many bloggers like yourself that I love is that they are discovering things with the audience or they are like allowing their ex their failures or their trials and tribulations to be platformed so that people know that it you don't have to be perfect. I feel like perfection, like I get so bored with perfection in blogging, with perfection in on social media in general, because what is what is that what is the value of that other right. than self-deprecation, right? right? To see someone that you agree with and they perceive and present themselves as perfect, they're basically just presenting a situation where you're gonna compare yourself in a negative exactly. way. And I feel like there's a fine line, but I think that you, you managed to do it well. And you also, um, so just backtrack, we met because of the internet. Yes, we did. <laughs> and somehow it's one of the <laughs> most like, I, I want to say like pure and random friendships that I've made as an adult woman, because <laughs> we met because we both were chosen to be uh, influencers for Bulletin, which is this female-owned business that supports female-owned businesses. So it's like a marketplace. And we were chosen to be like influencers for them. And we were invited to this ball and all this stuff. And, yeah. and we found each other's posts because we're both such like hyper researchers. Exactly. And we like <laughs> found each other's posts. And then we were like, um, I'm probably going by myself. Do you want to go with me? And then we went together. So and nice. then we just started to get to know each other. And then you invited me to this great thing called, you do this thing called Doyen Dinners. Yes. And do you want to talk about that? Yeah, I was actually thinking today, I'm like, well, I guess it's time for the spring one. I don't know, yeah. like time's moving in such a bizarre way. I was like, oh, I guess this is when I would send it out. So I guess it's another Zoom one. Uh, another um, Zoom. But that I, I that I started four years ago too. I must have had some sort of period in my life where I just kicked off all these things. But um, I felt like I knew so many diverse women in New York City. And I realized in talking with people like my colleagues that they felt like their groups of friends were all the same sort of from the same walk of life or similar industries or they've known them since high school whatever it was and i was like well i have a really strange diverse group of people that i spend my time with and wouldn't it be great if they could all meet each other so i formalized it it's still pretty like casual it's not like you know you're a member there's no fees it doesn't have like its own instagram feed it's pretty like just anyone that i've met or through a friend of a friend um, can come. And it's just a chance once a quarter for everyone to get together either at dinner or we go to the park. We've been to meditation, we've been to yoga and brunch and all sorts of things and recently on Zoom um, to just talk about uh, careers, goals. We did one years ago. It's still my favorite one to bring up. We went to someone's apartment and just drank wine and we wound up all 
crying, which was so random, but it just bubbled out of all of us. We were having a tough time. I think yeah. it was winter. Yeah. Um, and the one rule I had slated when I started the whole thing was we just couldn't talk about any romantic relationships um, and like cut that out because those get a lot of play in our lives and pop culture. And so that was the one rule and it's been amazing. And people have come and gone. They've moved out of the city into the city. It's, it's, it's a nice like, uh, that's the word I'm looking for, like an amoeba. It's always like moving. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's like a, you know, one of the things we've talked about in the Joyan dinners is ironically my first one, everyone was drinking at, uh, it was at, I think it was a Margalief's house or apartment. Yeah, yeah. It just happened to be during a period where I was going sober. So it was my first one and I was like, <laughs> I'm drinking kombucha, uh, <laughs> but like, let's all talk about our, our astrology. And it was like really yeah. deep. But I, I just thought it was really fascinating that in that first meeting I had with you guys, I realized, oh my God, there are so rare, so many rare moments that I get to be around just women. Mm -hmm. Like I'm constantly around, I'm the only woman, like I'm surrounded like by different like male friends or, or workers or whatever, but never like just women. And it was such, I think I came home and I like cried some more. Cause I was like, it was like this, this need to just like yeah. be around people who have like similar experiences or understandings and whether or not you address it directly is just like yeah there's yeah. something about the energy in the room of like you know we're all very different and like I said everyone has like totally different careers and everything but you know the world to some extent approaches us all us all the same and so we kind of all carry that feeling with us and I feel like that's where we all really start to feel connected is just like what's it like to move through the world or through New York City as a woman and it's exhausting so it's such a nice like space to be and just yeah let it go sometimes and it's great that you're so tapped into that ability to express and you know like that's part of why I chose my background today it's so yeah. wonderful I wish I could go somewhere like that immediately I know I'm just <laughs> thinking, I keep thinking about that and um, but you are I, I consider you to be one of the few people in my life that is like to a T, the definition of a renaissance woman. Like you, Thank you. you have technically no reason to do all that you do. You know, you could just do your job, relax, whatever, but you are constantly, you know, like I own this copy of Night Body, which Wait. I will lady. <laughs> yeah. I'll link this in my, in the description. It's available on Amazon. And it's a wonderful collection of poetry by the wonderful Amanda. And you also wrote a uh, horror screenplay yes, that I did. has been doing very well in the festival circuit. Do you want to talk to your, you, Amanda, the writer right now? Sure. So yeah, uh, I have my book of poetry. That was a real labor of love. Those poems, when I look at them now, I'm like, wow, some of these are really old. <laughs> but I hesitated for so long to put anything out. Um, and I guess it was last year, I just got to this place where I'm like, I gotta just start like letting some of this go because I can't create anything new, new until I let this old stuff just out. Whether it's wonderful or perfect or terrible, it has to get out of my mind. So that was the book, super exciting, was really well received by everyone who's read it and made me so happy. And I feel like since I released it, I have been writing better. And I think I truly freed up that mental space. I like let it go and was able to bring in the new phase of what my poetry is and what it sounds like and what it looks like. So that's truly so exciting. And then wrote a horror screenplay that um, with my boyfriend, Frank, which if you've never written anything with a significant other, this is a whole new experience. Um, <laughs> and I think it taught us a lot about who we each are as writers and it taught us about who we are as a couple and all of these things. It was really an amazing experience. Um, and it did, uh, it placed first, it won the horror category at the Big Apple Film Festival in winter, which was just, I mean, we slaved over this thing. So to have that moment, which was quite honestly, right before all of the coronavirus stuff. So I feel like we could have probably had some momentum and we just were like, well, it was a wonderful moment in time for now. Mm -hmm. um, was so exciting. 
went out to head the blog. Um, I do have a draft of a novel that I have not picked up in about 18 months. It's technically a first draft. It's a Western. Oh. <laughs> about a 14-year-old girl in Iowa. Um, one day I'll get back to it. I found during this quarantine, and I don't know how you feel about this, but I have found that short-term um, projects have been easier for me to focus on. Yeah. Um, I'm writing another script by myself and it's just hard to like to get to it because I don't know what's coming. Whereas a poem, writing a poem a day is like that's complete in its yeah world. It's been hard for me to focus on like oh a novel or a movie or anything like would you know that I would work probably a year on. Yeah. Uh, it's hard for me to focus on right now. I tell honest. you, right before everything started sell- settling in, um, I, I kind of have been in coronavirus mode since like late January, just because that's when it started to show up in the news and mm-hmm. I'm in Washington state. So immediately like I'm on worst case scenario, like for everything I, I was admittedly like panic attack, like almost every other day. And so I had to find a way to do, to manage that stress. Oh, and um, so anyway, what I was getting with that is I was actually in the process of starting my first feature length screenplay and the whole basis of the screenplay was to write a story to give me an opportunity to visit my family in Ecuador. Right, I remember this, yeah. Yeah. And now I'm like- That's devastating, yeah. When and how and does this even make sense right now? So I have to, I had like so much prepared for it and so much written and so many ideas. And now it's like logistics. It's like, yeah, because it was, I'm, I feel like sometimes the only way I can get a project done is if I make it really personal. So I have like stakes, but now I'm like, this is too personal. I can't <laughs> yeah. <get> to it. <laughs> You're like, wait, I took it a step too far right now. Yeah, so now I'm doing, this This is like my both long and short term project. It's like, well, what has been keeping me sane during this? Talking to these people and they have, you have, and everyone I've talked to has such interesting things to share that I feel like are of value for not just this moment, but like the adaptation dealing with the post whatever this is, because we're in a whole whole new world and we're, we have to bring value to conversations. Um, Which brings me to, I I feel like we kind of have covered some of the questions I tend to ask my guests, like in other ways, but (laughs) I wanted to ask you um, what, uh, tell me something that people may not know about you that you're willing to share. I know you're willing to share a lot. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Um, what did I say? I was, I I looked these over and I like came up with things. I probably should have written them. I think I was going to share for that one, honestly, that I was a shy kid. So I'm trying to think of. (laughs) Well, that's that's funny because like when you said that earlier, I was thinking about the fact that I tell people, a lot of my friends, I tell them like, well, I'm so shy or whatever. and, And they give me shit for it. But it's like, just because I'm able to be like this, it yeah. doesn't mean that I don't shut down for like 48 hours afterwards. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I'm, like it's like an energy. I'm willing to share this. And I feel like, like I can do this, but yeah, yeah I, it's, yeah, I, I think that's exactly what I was going to share is just that I, I think when people meet me now, they're like, wow, like you're so like exuberant and you have energy and like, you know, all of these people or whatever it is. I don't know that many people. Um, but it was because I had to, I don't know why I felt like I had to overcome my shyness, but I think I just got thrust into the world, especially I think the transition around high school, college, where I was like, oh, like no one's going to help me do anything. (laughs) I have to help myself. And to do that, I need to like communicate with people. I need to, you know, figure out what makes people tick. I need to really engage and not just like shy away from things so and I think even when I was younger a way to to convince myself to not be shy was just go like full goofball yes I feel like kids tend to do that where you're like well I won't be my real self but I'll just be like clown self because you know everyone knows I'm kidding around and if I were to be my real self then I open myself up for like 
trouble. And so I think it was like over time melding the like clown self with my actual self and like just telling my shy self to. Yeah. These are the things I think about. I'm serious. <laughs> no, I, I mean, it's, it's. As I'm talking, I'm like, hmm. That's why, that's why I feel like um, with you, it's, it's a lot, it's a lot. Um, we find ways to like keep the conversation going because we're kind of like. We're, yeah, we're always like, well, what, what's in this alleyway? And then you're like over here and you're like, yeah. start. I don't really, I don't know where I am anymore. Yeah, and, and one of the things that I got to do with you, um, uh, which relates to one of the questions that I had, was when I asked like some of my guests, like where does your creative process start? Like what is your, your North Star, all of that? Like I got the opportunity to be part of something that you've done regularly, which is the um, quilt workshops. Mm, yes. And you did one talking about like vulnerability and like creativity and all of that. And do you want to talk about like, I mean, quilt is really cool and there still seem to be going like digitally. Yeah. And I actually, I had to reach out. I honest, I wrote them like a very honest email because people are hosting virtual quilts Yeah. and they had reached out to me like, we'd love for you to host one. And I wrote back a very honest note. This was when I was sick <laughs> and I was like, Hey, I'm really sick, not to alarm anyone. And then also you know, I was still in this phase, we all go through these phases, I was in this phase where my company had to unfortunately lay off a bunch of people, and I was really, really good friends of mine, I was hurting from them, but then also we were trying to navigate, like, okay, how are we going to pick up all of this work, so I wrote them a very honest note, and I was like, it's a lot for me right now, but if I can get my, if I can, like, pull myself up, I'm there, because it is an awesome community it's a lot like the doyen dinners in that they um before our current times it would you would meet in a woman's home and they would guide you through questions there'd be a topic a theme um and it was very similar it was you know let's talk about our careers let's talk about emotions let's talk about who we are as people um it's a really amazing platform and i love them and i cannot wait to go back to hosting again because it's an amazing format yeah um and yeah I hosted that vulnerability one and the creativity one which now in retrospect you know I was moving a mile a minute at those times I wasn't yeah. reflecting I'm like oh yeah that's really like a lot of where my brand so to speak sits it's like that's how I spend my time that's what I think about so I'm like I'll just share that with people that's all again that's all I have to offer <laughs> But I think creativity and vulnerability go hand in hand. And a lot of the times it's balancing out, you know, how vulnerable do I want to be in this moment or what? Sorry, my phone's buzzing. Yeah. Terrible. Oh. We're, we're both like, Ugh. special guest star, my mom. Oh. <laughs> I'll call her back tomorrow. Or later, not tomorrow. That sounds terrible. No. Um, but anyway, I was going down another rambling path. But yeah, the quilt's an amazing platform. I would highly suggest anyone check it out. And when it's in its, I think they're thriving now because everyone's desperate for connection in any yeah. way. And but when it was in people's homes, it was so nice because it was such an intimate setting. It was, um, you know, you're not at a restaurant, you're not at a bar, you're not distracted. Yeah, you could have some really good conversations. And and just to be have the opportunity to focus on a topic for an hour. And in this day and age, yeah. as it were, you know, is so, like, so I used to find it so like soothing for my brain to be like, oh, I just spent an hour just talking about vulnerability. It took me back to like being in school where you just had time to think about concepts. And I don't feel like I always get that time. Of course, now with quarantine, I seem to have more time on my hands, but um, yeah. 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 No, that, and like, it's it's so it's so vital. I, I felt I felt so rejuvenated after that conversation because we really delved deep into different like both personal but also like what is the antithesis of vulnerability? It's like creating this mask. It's creating this facade, and that's so mm -hmm. exhausting. And it's it's also not self serving. It's not right. a self serving act. But but like as women, we have to do it so much more often, whether it be because we're trying to prevent like unwanted advances or we want to not be seen as emotional creatures. It's such an interesting thing that for women, it does take us that little extra push to allow ourselves the space to be vulnerable. And I think mm -hmm. that's something that I really enjoyed about that workshop. And I hope that like more of that kind of stuff comes 
Um, but an, I wanted to go completely off topic since we always go. Yeah, off. let's do it. My favorite, going off topic. <laughs> yeah, since we have a, a few more minutes and I just wanted to randomly, we were talking uh, right before we started recording about how like we're, you know, fixating on different things and self-care and this and that and like skincare has become a journey and like we <laughs> both live in these pre-war apartments and we thought, oh, I'm not wearing makeup. I'm going to like, it's no, been it's horrible. <laughs> like, drying out your skin. Have you had any like holy grail like hot <laughs> moments or like I don't know things you've realized? Adapting? Yeah, um, I'm trying to think. Like the things I used to use just feel like they're not like packing the same punch. Like especially like I said this week, my skin's so dry, and I think maybe it's the weird wacky um, polar vortex we've thrown into the mix this week for no reason whatsoever. Sure. Yeah. Um, but I, I do really like that one I was talking about, even though last night I didn't do it's like usual, like overnight change, but it's, um, Laneige, they have a sleeping mask cool. and they have a traditional non-scented one, but they released a lavender one. So I put the lavender one on last night to hopefully help me sleep. Yeah. I really like their, I really like that the sleeping mask. It's like, it, it like it's a nice like film <laughs> and you sleep with it on and it like soaks in um and then I always use the ordinary products but lately I just feel like the boy like the stuff's just not like getting in there so I'm trying to figure out some new things so if you have any new things well I I love to know that I am so grateful for my humidifier ah. like holy yes. Oh my goodness. Like actually you, that's a great point. Yeah. It's we've been uh, cleaning our humidifier out all week. Maybe that's why my skin's freaking out. It's like we've been like running vinegar through it or whatever you're supposed to do. I don't know if Frank's doing that. It. It's do. so good to have that. Like it I got it because my um my asthma was acting up and mm -hmm. I was breathing and I my radiator is right next to my bed which is the worst, course, yeah. but, but, but like, I'm that person that I have it situated there because that's the best feng shui in my apartment, in my bedroom, like that, I'm very much about that, <laughs> so like, if I move my bed any other way, like, I can't see what's coming, or it will affect my love life, or my wealth, so I'm just like, I'm my this is where it's going, yeah, <laughs> so that's been a big one, drinking water, also, I've been wearing sunscreen indoors, and that's been helping. Mm. Um, I, I love sun. I love this sunscreen from uh, Crave Beauty. It's this uh, a YouTuber actually, Leah Yu. Um, oh yeah, I'll, I'll put a link below. But it's called the Beat Shield, and it feels so nice. It's and just like guess, soothing. <laughs> yeah, it's so soothing. It's a chemical sunscreen, awesome. but it's like I don't know. So yeah, I've just been. I've been taking my, my my husband's been putting up with me watching a lot of skincare tutorials for months now even before the quarantine but now it's like he's oh, like why do you need to order this why do you need to get <laughs> I'm turning into a, a raisin I need things I know and I, I just look raisin it. look yeah and I and I have uh you know like a thing for everything he he calls my vanity like a like an apothecary like a farm. <laughs> Like, I'm like, no, put it on like, there. Though. <laughs> like, I got this SOS spray. It's um from Tower 28. It's, like, approved by the Eczema Association. Oh. And, like, basically, like, I, I, I'm probably saying it wrong. Hypochlorous acid. I think that's how you say it. But it's, like, a salt water, and it, when you spray it, it makes the skin barrier, like, bring the... Um, I think the white blood cells, it like makes you have an immune response. Oh. So it's kind of like, I call it like my Lysol. So I like, <laughs> you're like, ah. I spray it. It's like disinfectant. <laughs> it kills bacteria. And then I let it sit. And then I put everything else on. But it's like, Ooh, that I, sounds spray that. I spray that on his like cuts and stuff. I'm like, <laughs> so I don't Wait, know. That's I guess amazing. We have, we have all these different weird things that we're learning about our skin and ourselves while, <laughs> while <laughs> quarantined. I know. I, I actually, um, should, should I tell this story? Maybe not. I'll tell you when we're not recording. Okay. Um, <laughs> I caught myself. Um, but yeah, like, I mean, I need a pedicure so bad. I need, 
I, and I'm not like a go get a pedicure person. Like I, I, and I've always, always had the ability to do my own nails, but I don't know. There's something about being in here that I'm, I'm like, I just need like some TLC from somebody else. I just need like a massage or a facial or something to just like, I don't know. Maybe you can get Frank to create a spa day for you. Right. Like you just have I need to teach him. I need him to watch. Have you heard of face gym? Yes. Of course. I need him to watch some face gym videos and then do the face gym for me. <laughs> yeah, I actually, so Clay had a play um, where he had to do like multiple competitions. Like it was like, you know, finals or whatever. So yeah. I kept on trying to be like his, um, like, you know, I'm here for you, whatever. But my way of being here for him, besides like coming to the show and like bringing him flowers and supporting him, was I was like, I can do a gua sha. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing a little face gym. Yeah, so I gave him a little, uh, like a rose quartz, like gua sha treatment and like face oils. And he was like, it feels so good. My face feels so awake. Yeah, you can, f the blood starts to flow through your face. And you're like, oh, that's, oh, hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I love, so maybe you can convince Frank to be your. Yeah, I think I need a little face gym. Cause, cause it, it just feels good. I can do it, it to good. myself, but it just it's not good. the same. Yeah. It's the same as like when you like rub your feet, you're like, that feels good. But like when someone else rubs your feet, you're like, that's, that's, that's really jam right there. Yeah. On that note, <laughs> <laughs> what would you like me to tell the universe on your behalf? Oh, so hopefully this is not, I went funny with mine. I was thinking that you could tell the universe that um, this isn't funny anymore and just leave it at that. Because <laughs> I was thinking about it this morning. I'm like, you know what? I'm so sick of every, like, this is just getting out. We've got murder hornets. We've got a polar vortex in Meg. No one can leave their house. I'm like, I'm done. Yeah. And also Re someone hit reset button for me. Yeah. And, and, and also like, I mean, I, I don't know about you, but I'm just at this point where there's so much that's going on and it's so overwhelming. And I definitely spent the first part of the quarantine, like worrying about literally everything I read on the news mm -hmm. and knowing that I don't have like a bajillion dollars to donate. You know, I, I barely can take care of my, my nonsense mm -hmm. and who knows where the next paycheck will come from once this is over right but all we can do right now is connect and be with each other support each other's messages of like you know vulnerability hope uh you know creativity everything right so this has been my the thing that's, that's brought me some joy which I haven't really. I feel amazing. I feel like I started this day in like a pretty bad place. I just had a stressful week. I woke up kind of still stressed and worried about stuff. And I was like, well, I wish I just didn't have to worry about anything. And I feel, I feel really good after this. So thank you so much. I feel like myself. Oh, that's the thing is like, I feel like I need to like turn off like stressed out or overworked or worried brain and just go back to myself for a little bit. Like it yeah. doesn't last forever, but it feels good right now. So thank you so much. It makes me so happy. And, you like, know, we both, I know we've both had our difficulty because we're both in like respective epicenters. And so there's so many sirens where you are and so many sirens where I am in Brooklyn and you're in Queens. And so like, I'm actually really oh, happy that I haven't heard anything today. Me neither. Like I've had to like mute it on other uh, Zoom calls. So <laughs> Wait, that's actually so true. Huh. Yeah. I love it. Well, thank you so much for being on my show. And everybody, check out everything I put in the description. Like, comment, subscribe, and tell your friends. All right. Bye. It's not funny anymore. It's not funny anymore. It's not funny anymore.